Greetings and welcome. My name is Dan Stoltz. I am the IT Pro Evangelist uh, for Microsoft. I cover the Northeast region, which is uh, New York to Maine. My email is dstoltz at microsoft.com and my blog is blogs.technet.com slash Dan Stoltz. Today we're going to cover Windows XP to Windows 7 migration using the user state migration tool. The user state migration tool is a light touch, high volume deployment. The strategy requires limited interaction during deployment. Um, interaction occurs at the beginning of the installation, but the remainder of the process is pretty much automated. Uh, Microsoft recommends this strategy to organizations with a dedicated IT staff that has managed networks with 200 to 500 client computers. For uh, prior deployment experience is not, rec is not required, but it is beneficial to use this strategy. My own personal experience, though, is that are in deployments that I would do, I, I would cut that number a lot shorter, a lot smaller. If I had even 25 machines or maybe even five, um, I might use the, uh, the light touch deployment. It is very, very simple, very, very reliable. It is enterprise ready. Um, and with the simplicity of use, uh, uh, you know, there's other tools to, to do it. Um, uh, for the lower numbers, but in, in my eyes, this, this tool is really the tool to use for, uh, for all deployments uh, until you get to the point where you have thousands of machines, perhaps, or more than 500 client machines, then you definitely want to go with a more scripted um, zero touch, but uh, the light touch is really a good solution for, for anything below that. With the user state migration tool, we're in this demo, we're going to migrate a Windows XP desktop um, to Windows 7. We're going to walk through that process using the user state migration tools. Um, you could also use this tool when going from, from Vista, uh, from Vista to, to Windows 7. Um, basically, you just need the machines to be connected um, to a work group, or you need to have network connectivity between between the machines, and uh, it's a uh, really just a three-step process. Uh, the the first step is you're going to save the uh, migration. Um, uh, you're going to save the state of the machine uh, to a you know shared location on a on a server or on a on a workgroup computer or wherever anywhere on the on the network, and then you're going to um, go to the new machine, whether it be a new machine or or reformat the Windows XP machine or the Windows uh, Vista machine, and uh, deploy a clean copy of Windows 7 on it, and then. Then once you have a clean copy of Windows 7 installed, you simply use the load state command to and point to uh, the location where you saved the save state, and it will read all of the settings, all the documents, all the favorites, the desktop, the, the background, all the things that you want to save, um, and it will migrate those to the newly installed Windows 7 machine. Okay, I'm in my XP machine, and let's just take a quick peek around and kind of show you what we're going to be uh, making sure we get on the other end. Um, notice there's a few icons on the desktop, um, including the desktop note.txt. Um, and notice I'm on the desktop of the administrator. And um, I'll confirm that by just going into here. Um, also under my documents, you'll see that I have a document, uh, document notes.txt. Um, there and under my pictures, I have uh, I have a few pictures in there as well. A couple of other things of note: I don't have. Uh, okay, I I did set my uh, internet options, and I have a couple of pages here. I have uh, Bing.com and I have slash dan stoltz which is my blog. So I'm hoping all of that stuff comes over with my migration. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the migration and. Make it happen. Makes makes some magic happen. Okay, so I'm going to run a command line, uh, start uh, CMD, and uh, I actually have already downloaded the uh, USMT files and I stored them on the C drive. That's uh, so. Let's go to that directory, uh, USMT user state migration tool, and the command that I actually want to run is scan state. So let's take a look at scan state. Um, and I'm just going to run a question mark key so I can show you some of the parameters. Some of the parameters that I'm going to be using, um, um, I'll, I'll explain those, but there are many, many, many other parameters that you could use as well. So uh, you can take a look at that at your leisure. Okay. Let me go ahead and make this window a little bit bigger so it's easier to see. And uh, scan state. And the command that I actually want to run is I want to actually let me just make sure I have Windows connectivity to, to the location where I'm going to store the scan state. Uh, actually, 
actually I have it there. So Win7 Client USMT, there should be a folder there and I'm going to go to the migration folder and my store and notice that folder is empty. So that's where I'm going to actually store my scan state. So the scan state grabs all the files, compresses them, puts them into a, to a cabinet or a package file and leave, it's going to leave them on the location that I specify. So the first parameter is the location where I want to put that uh, store. So uh, that's going to be, in fact, let me just copy and paste that just to speed things along. And the other parameters I'm going to use are I'm going to use an O switch. Now the O switch says overwrite whatever is there, and I'm just used to using it because I run this all the time and I just overwrite the file that's there. And uh, um, the C says uh, continue, even if if there's non-fatal errors, go ahead and continue. I don't care for it to stop on the, on the non-fatal errors. And then the configuration files. Now the um, configuration files that it's going to use is the configuration is basically the default configuration file, uh, which is set to use to, to grab all users, etc. Um, and that uh, this XML file that I'm going to point to uh, is part of the um, files that you extract whenever you download the USMT files. And there's actually two of those that I'm going to be using. Uh, the both of them use the I switch, uh, so um, I migapp.xml and uh, imigdocs.xml. Now I, um, I could also use a log file or tell it where to put the log file and I think that's an L switch but uh, I'm not going to worry about that I'm just going to put it in the default location which is going to be my current directory. So notice it did put my uh, scan state log in the current directory where I'm sitting. If I wanted to put it somewhere else, if I wanted to store it with the uh, my store, that would probably be a more logical place to put it. Again, that's the L switch. Um, it's gone out and it's looked at this machine. I've, I've got a couple of users. I have Blaine uh, um, and I have Administrator, my two users. First thing it did was it copied the, the users um, and then it copied all the users' data. So it's done. It gave me a success and a return code of zero, which means it had no problems whatsoever. Now, the next thing to do is to basically take this machine, uh, format it, and uh, do a load state. But there is another thing that I just wanted to mention to you. There is something called a hard link migration. If you don't want to format the machine, you can use a hard link migration. And basically the hard link migration, um, and in the hard link migration you can do the Windows 7 install. As long as you do the Windows 7 install without um, move, without formatting the drive, then uh, uh, what it does is it basically flags all the files that it needs to save a copy of, um, and then uh, whenever it uh, does a load state, it does it very, very fast. This would be very, very useful if you have data that is, you know, um, gigabytes in size. So if you have somebody's got a, you know, maybe a, a gig and a half in their PST file and, you know, three or four or 10 or 20 or 50 gig of data and documents and pictures and music and all that other stuff, um, instead of copying that over the wire or putting it up on the, on a, on a share and the time that it takes to do all of that, you can use a hard link migration, which is just another switch in the USMT. But we're done. I'm going to actually do a wipe of this machine, um, and instead of um, just letting you watch the wheels turn, I'm going to go ahead and shut down, and um, I'll resume the recording whenever I got Windows 7, a clean copy of Windows 7 installed on it. So it is preparing my desktop. I have Windows 7 Ultimate installed on the machine. Um, I just want to reiterate the hard link migration. If you're going to format the machine, you definitely don't want to use the hard link migration because you will lose all your data. Um, and if you need to resize the partition or change the partition size, the hard link migration is probably not your best choice. So uh, that's really kind of going to be the, the definitive line as to whether or not to use the hard link migration or not. It is much, much faster because it doesn't have to move data, uh, particularly for those uh, large profiles. But uh, if you do uh, move the data, um, you can format and repartition and do whatever you like. So I have a clean copy of Windows 7 installed on my machine now. And I just want to show you around. I did do a couple of uh, preliminary things here. Uh, I, uh, whenever I did the install, I set up my first user, which I called Dan. And um, that's pretty much where I'm at now. And I want to just kind of prove that to you. I'm going to go into Manage My Computer. And I'm going to go into local users. And uh, notice I have one user, and that's Dan. Um, I also have an administrator. Notice that uh, administrator right now is uh, disabled. I'm going to go ahead and enable that because, if you recall, whenever I did my uh, 